uh, the cornering. Because mm. obviously in that match, there was some mixed messages that got to Phil yeah. um, when he was stuck in the triangle. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd just quickly touch on that as well with the cornering. So for all the guys going forwards, like cornering is something that um, is like competing, you get better at it over time. I think sometimes people um, had the delusion that as long as you're shouting something positive, <laughs> yeah. what you deem as positive, <laughs> it, um, it will spur them on to, yeah. to do great things within the match. But um, what you've got to remember is, especially when it's moving fast. So obviously the situation that happened was Phil was caught in a triangle. That you've literally got a couple of seconds to make a decision. Not yeah. even got a couple of seconds to yeah, make yeah. a decision. Like you're going to get finished in a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. Like the, the decision you need to make has got to be you know, yes. a split decision. So the information that he has to receive has to be the correct information. And he has to have that clarity mm -hmm. that he's going to act on it straight mm -hmm. away. And the trouble is when you are in those situations, anything you hear, you will probably react yeah, to. Yeah. It could be... It could be the opposition's corner sh deliberately shouting the wrong information, and you know it. But because you hear it, we should use you that. You just go, yeah. <laughs> you just go on it. Yeah. So, yeah, there's there's been a couple of times when we've been cornering people down here, and people are just shouting, you know, like random, just things. random stuff. Mm. Yeah, I can't I can't really think of an example. I was gonna say like just shouting things like "Come on," like you can do it. Yeah. Um, Sound like Real water boy. <laughs> <laughs> but realistically, what, what you've got to do is you've got to tell the person what's on the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, how long, how long they've got left. You've got to say that. Um, that's productive. You know, two yeah, minutes what, left. What's the score? Two minutes so left. So they're aware of what the goal is because the goal changes throughout the match. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're sitting in someone's closed guard and you're up by six points or something like that, you don't yeah. have to do anything. Yeah. But if you don't realise, maybe it's still a draw yeah. or something, then the corner needs to be shouting, look, you've got to go. You've got yeah, to, of course. I don't know if you realise, but you've got to stand up and mm -hmm. take a risk and, and do something. So that's what you need your corner for. And the other big thing about cornering is that most people that corner are experienced. And you've got to make sure that you're not telling someone what you would do in that situation. Yeah. And I think a lot of people will get guilty of that. Um, because you could have someone who's been training 12 months and you're telling them this specific sequence of moves that you like to do and they haven't got a clue yeah. what you even yeah. mean. So for the most part, it's got to be precise instruction. It's got to be simplified. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time, and this is where I got my left and right is real good because I used to get confused sometimes. If, you know, like when, you, when you're telling someone, oh, you're left arm, oh, I mean, you're right arm. And, yeah. and it depends on how you're looking at, you know, which mm -hmm. way around they are. And I've got really good now at being able to shout to people, put your left arm to here, yeah. put your yeah. right arm under hook. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So that there's clear advice of what they need to do in that split second. Yeah. Because the amount of times you can go to shout information and the match has moved on. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? You shout something, it's already gone to the next position. Think of the, the very first time on a few comps where I had to pick up pick up a few times when when you couldn't make it or or we did you did the morning i did the afternoon and things like that i was guilty of that massively you know shouting a random move for someone to do but you know again i say hindsight's twenty twenty. but if they knew that move they'd be hitting that move mm. and then i've listened to you do it and it, it's more well broken broken right down mm. broken right down you know step up left foot first or you know trap his left hand, pin it to his chest, whatever, strip the grip. These are, are more valuable to the person out yeah. there rather than bombarding them. And then they get confused in their own head and nothing happens. Yeah. And you've got to let people like um, shine through with their own way of grappling as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of the time I will not say too much as well. So when the match starts and they're, and they're standing up, I might say things like fake your levels, um, you yeah. know, attack the head, try and snap and then set up. Um, because they're going to have something in their head that they're going to do. Yeah. And if you start blabbering something yeah. else, like, oh, well, that's there, that's there, that's there. Now they're confused as what yeah. to do again. I should so go a for lot that, of time, otherwise they're yeah, going to say gotta something. Yeah, you got to sit back and like, okay, let's, let, let him go, see what he does. Mm -hmm. and, and when something's happening that I can, see, I can clearly see he's trying to do, then I'm going to yeah. add a little bit in here and there. Mm -hmm. But let them do it rather than, you know, again, trying to force them into uh, grappling how how you would, I suppose. Well, like you said, yeah, exactly that. Not everyone grapples the same, do they? Mm. I mean, I, I'm not even close to grappling like a, a Tarun or someone like this. And he does seem to find his way into the positions he wants to get. So, you know, the the, the advice that should have been shouting to him is was the finishes. 
You know, yeah. when he, he got to the positions with unorthodox methods, really. He won't, it wasn't anything textbook, but he was super good at getting to them positions. Now, it should be, you know, pull the head, you know, adjust and, and do this, that and the other. It, it, he had his own way of getting there. Um, and individual styles. Joe was good. He, he had a game plan. He went out there mm. and he he got to where he needed to get to. And then from the corner, the, the, the cornering that was going on, I was going to say shouting, but it wasn't really shouting. It, it was conversing, really, um, was to drop off his elbow, look over his shoulder. He, he was turning the opposite yeah. way on that. So it was an easy thing to, to corner him and to get him to finish on it. Yeah. You know, without trying to change his actual game by shouting moves that are only familiar to yourself. Yeah. So, exactly. Like I said, going forward, guys will hopefully have their own identity and their own style of grappling. Mm -hmm. And then, from a cornering point of view, um, yeah, you just just tweak a little bit, pick up on theirs. Go, really. Yeah, yeah. It's hard when the, when it gets into it though, and you really want that guy to. Uh, yeah, and, there's, and there's you nothing, can I said see to the guys, them advancing on it, and it's like you're getting yeah. so excited for yeah. them. And there's nothing wrong with cheering people mm -hmm. on. Obviously, we want to cheer people on and give them that little bit of spirit to to to, to fight for those inches. Um, but yeah, it's just got to be that people aren't shouting all different information. And um, like I said, you think about the person who's in there, not just shouting for your own validation. That yeah. you, you know, you think you know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah.